Hey guys, uh, welcome to my second video. Uh, in this video, I will be basically doing a quick introduction to the Ubuntu desktop. Um, if you haven't ever used this before, and even if by looking at this desktop you're confused and afraid and you want to go cry in a corner, don't be. This is actually, they've made this really easy to use. You've probably uh, used Windows or Mac OS and you've thought about it and you kind of said it's a little bit complicated. It's not too um, instinctive, but this is the most instinctive operating system you probably ever play with. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start and you'll probably, you most definitely see what I mean. But the first thing you will notice is we have two bars, one on the top and one on the bottom. The top one is basically for uh, applications to start them and to keep track of them as well as keep track of your time and keep track of your user. The bottom is just to keep track of all the applications that are running and to organize them through different windows. So I'll go ahead and start with the first up here. You can see three different menus. This basically is the application menu. Everything's organized by category. We have a places menu, which everything in here is basically your files on your computer. We have documents, music, the home folder, etc. We have a computer where all your CD drives, USB drives, hard drives, externals, etc. will be shown right here. As well as it will be shown underneath, like this one here, but you have more options underneath. We have the ability to connect to a network. We have the ability to connect to a server. We have the ability to search for files and review recent documents. <coughs> The system preferences and administration are a little bit more complicated. We have here the more customizing of the computer, how it works, how it looks, um, the keys, how it feels, such like that. The administration is more technical, more on hard drives and hard disks and login screens and stuff like that. It's a more um, touchy subject, so I wouldn't recommend you playing around in this area unless you know what you're doing. We have a help and support area. We have uh, about GNOME and about Ubuntu. Next part you'll see are these two icons. Uh, these are basically your launchers. Uh, if I click here, I'm going to go ahead and launch Firefox. Or right here, I will launch the help center. And that's it. So that's how it launches it. What we can do if you don't like these, we can go ahead and remove from panel like so. Or if you want other icons up in this area, all you have to do is go to the application you would like, right click on it and add this to desktop or panel. The panel being up here, the desktop being in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and do panel. And I can do it again for the desktop as well. And you see how easily that integrates to your feel. I'm going to take, take, take that off and remove that. And you can add as many applications as you have space up here. Uh, you can make more space by adding more um, panels to the left and to the right, but I'll do that in the customizing section of the videos. Right here we have the task manager, or the system tray, whichever one you feel like calling it. Right here is this is just an application that's recording the desktop at the moment. Right here we have a Bluetooth control, we can send files, we have uh, different um, pieces, different devices that are connected to, or I'm associated with. Here are the wireless networks, right now I'm connected to my internet. We can do VPNs, or we can create our, a new wireless network through our wireless card as long as it supports ad hoc. Next piece is the volume. It's simple enough, a little bar, turn it up and down, and it can go more complicated as to a whole setting here. We have input, output. You can see right here, my voice is going up and down. I can change the sensitivity, and you probably notice the difference. I'm going to keep it there. Do hardware, you can change the actual driver for it. Uh, most All of these work, it's just different levels of 5.1, 5.0, 4.0, etc. Sound effects, these are for um, when you log in, you hear that uh, very nice sound that um, the Ubuntu login sound, I don't really know what to call it. It's like an African drum theme. I'm not too fond of it, but I like it because of uh, the Ubuntu name. For the most of it, that's pretty much it. The icon right here is just a manager for AIM uh, for your messengers. The bottom part is for your email. It'll tell you when you have new emails and such. Oops, I just clicked on it. Uh, over, let me click that. All right, over here we have the basically dates and times and temperatures, etc. Anything around you. We have the ability to double click on any of these dates and set any to do tasks. We have the ability to um, customize this different parts of the world. I pretty much set my home on um, 
Coco, I believe, and my, uh, to keep track of someone else in uh, Sofia in Bulgaria. And I can keep track of what time it is there to what time it is here so I don't wake them up in the middle of the night. And as well as keep track of their you know, weather just in case I want to small talk with them. And then last but not least is right here, this <clears throat> the little username. And then this guy text test because I wanted just to keep a simple name, just a, a brand new look, so I can kind of get this is exactly how it's gonna look right after you install it. That's what I wanted to keep it so you can understand the basic standard installation. Now for test you can set the different um sat statuses for your aim, Yahoo, and other messengers just by here as long as you're logged in. You can lock the screen, you can get a guest session going, you can switch to user, log out, suspend, hibernate, restart, shut down the basics of all computers. Next piece down here is this bar. This is the window management. I have to do a few examples to show you how this works. Now let's say I open a few windows here and you can see on the very bottom how all of these are being populated. Uh, let's do this. You can see how I have now five window windows open and I can switch just by clicking on the window name. I can do a F spot, I can do my chess game, I can do the disk analyzer, etc. That's the basics of uh, the little bar here. It's like every other one, like Windows. Uh, Mac has its own dock, but you can get that too if you really want it. Also, on the very left, we have this little desktop button. We can actually, it says right here, click here to hide all windows. And if I click here, not surprisingly, it hides all the windows. I'm going to click it, and there they are back again. Uh, if you like to organize your desktop by different things, let's say uh, you want games on one, you want like to play games and you like to do office, but you like to switch often between the two, it's uh, pretty easy actually. Just scroll, watch my hand, watch my hand scroll, it's the edge, and it's not working. Hold on, I gotta enable it first. Sorry about that. There, let me just turn that on searching for drivers. I'll explain this area here. I just forgot to enable this one piece for uh, the multiple desktops to work. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little searching for drivers. We'll go ahead and erase everything because I feel like it. And searching, searching. Again, I'm sorry for this delay. There we go. <coughs> Alright, now that that's enabled, now, again, let me do it over. Now when you move all the way across, you go to the next desktop. Interesting, huh? Well, what does this mean? It means you can organize depending on what you like to do at what different times of the day. You never really have to close a window because these applications take almost no memory. They're very, very efficient. And of course, if you're working on multiple things, why need a dual screen? Why do you need to pay for another monitor when they cost, I don't know how much, it costs 200 bucks. You can just do this, quickly switch between different. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't work as great as having two monitors because you can look at them simultaneously but again it's just as much as switching back and forth like this between again the next piece down here is the control for your multiple desktops you can click on this click on there to switch in between now you can of course have as many desktops as you want not as many but you can do a 16 let's see 16 by 16 and you can see that it's very big now but I like to have it at 2 because I don't use that much some people like four, so let's do four. Here we are. We have four different uh, little cubes now, or squares, rectangles, whatever. We can spread these apart, put them on different desktops, be creative, you know, organized, whatever you want. Of course, you can do a little graphics trick with this. You can actually make a cube, and you can roll around the cube, and you can look at your windows. That's more that's more advanced, but not advanced. But that's when you customize everything. And of course, the very last is trash. That's as simple as clicking, opening. Oh, here's my trash. Empty my trash to save space. Empty trash, and it's gone. And that's it. That's the basics of the desktop. I hope you enjoyed this. And that's for now and I will be doing more videos afterwards. Thank you again and goodbye.